going to look at um, the next section of learning unit seven. So let's just consider the topic that we will be dealing with tonight. Fiscal policy in the ISLA model for an open economy. So with fiscal policy, we are considering um, how the government is going to use government spending and tax policies to influence the level of output and income. The ISLA model, if we think about that, that's what you got, um, covered in learning unit four, your ISLA model, and then an open economy, what that means is you've got your consumers, your households, your investments, your firms, your government, and then also your foreign sector with exports and imports being part of your consumption function. So the learning outcomes of Learning Unit 7 is set out in the study guide. And last week, I believe my fellow e-tutor um, covered the impact of monetary policy in an open economy. Tonight, we are going to look a little bit more on the goods market and then especially on the equilibrium and the impact of fiscal policy in an open economy. Just again, the open economy, what it um, refers to is that your ISLA model that you learned about in your learning unit four is expanded to include the foreign sector and that um, um, the exchange rate are also, is also now um, uh, impacting on the model. So we can't say this enough that for this um, model of module, you have to do the learning units one after the other. You cannot jump around. Each learning unit is like a building block following on each other. And um, on page 204, it's you are required or you are referred to this table where it says that you are required to have prior knowledge before you can move forward. So this is just to reiterate that all the learning units really follow on each other and you can't um, learn the one without understanding the previous ones. So let's think, look at all the things that they say you have to understand before we can move into depth into this um, topics. So the first one is demand for goods in an open economy. And that for that, you've got your demand equation and um, being um, consumption spending, investment spending, government spending. You deduct your imports and you add your exports. Then the relationship between the interest rate and investment in learning unit four, we learned that we expanded the investment function and that it is impacted by the level of outcome and income and the real interest rate. There's a positive relationship between the level of output and investment. As your output and your income increases, firms tend to invest more. And then there's a negative relationship between the interest rate and investment. And that is due to the fact that your um, borrowing costs increase if the interest rate increases, your investment declines, and also your um, opportunity costs for holding money increases. So, as an example, if your interest rate increases, like I said, your investment um, takes off, your demand and your level of output and income also declines. And then they say you must also know what is the, uh, the net exports. So net exports refers to the difference between exports and imports. You've covered this in learning unit six, and um, you've also covered that if the trade balance is equal to zero, then your net exports are also zero. And according to the IS relationship for an open economy, as output increases, net exports decreases. But we will cover this a little bit later again. Then in terms of your exchange rate and the appreciation, depreciation, as well as the relationship between the exchange rate and net exports. So net exports we've just covered, that's saying that it's the difference between exports and imports. And we've, we know that there's a negative relationship that exists between the nominal exchange rate and net exports. The appreciation, depreciation, and this relationship, I'm going to explain a little bit more on the next slide. So, um, Sorry, just remember in this module, we follow this convention for um, defining the exchange rate. And then appreciation is if the price of the domestic currency in terms of the foreign currency increases. So your domestic currency is worth more. So there's the appreciation, 
you get more dollars for your rands. Um, so the price of exports increase and the price of imports decrease, which means you're going, your exports is, will decrease and your imports increase because imports, as I said, is cheaper. And therefore, your, um, your net exports will go down. Then on the, on the other side is that the depreciation, that's if a price of domestic currency in terms of foreign currency decreases, so your domestic currency is worth less. So you get less dollars for your rand or also your price of your exports decrease and the price of your imports increase. Exports increase and imports decrease and your, um, you get an increase in your net exports. Then you should also know that one of the assumptions of the ISLA model is that the price level is constant. So the domestic price level as well as the foreign price level remain unchanged. There's no inflation in this uh, model, in this um, model yet. So therefore we can use nominal variables such as the nominal interest rate and the nominal exchange rate when we do the, when we analyze the economy. So uh, when we look at our equilibrium condition in the goods market and we are using nominal variables, then you can see your um, level of output and income is a function of consumption spending, investment spending, government spending and net exports. Consumption spending that we, we've learned is impacted by your disposable income, so it's your um, income less your taxes, and there's a positive relationship. So if your disposable income increases, consumption spending will increase. Investment spending, we've just covered in the previous slide as well. This one, where we said there's a positive relationship between um, income and investment and a negative relationship between the interest rate and investments. Government spending and the net exports are impacted by um, a negative relationship between your level of income and output and your exchange rate and then a positive relationship between your um, the level of income and output of your trade partners, your international counterparts. So let's just summarize the things that we've learned or that we've remembered from the previous slides. So the impact of the nominal interest rate on the goods market, an increase in the interest rate leads to a decrease in investment spending, the demand for goods and the level of output and income decreases. The decrease in the output and income is multiple of the decrease in investment spending due to the multiplier effect. Then the exchange rate on the goods market, the impact thereof, a depreciation of the exchange rate results in an increase in exports and a decrease in imports due to the expenditure, expenditure switching and the trade balance improves. This increase in exports and expenditure switching increases the demand for goods and the level of output and income. We will cover this again a little bit later. Okay, so let's do an activity to study our um, understanding of the prior knowledge that we're supposed to have. Um, so you, if you look at the goods market equilibrium equation, it's given over here. The question is we should determine whether these statements are true or false. So let's consider the first one. An increase in the interest rate increases investment spending the demand for goods and the level of output and income. So an increase in the interest rate, that's false because remember we said that there is a negative relationship between the in interest rate and investment spending. So if the interest rate increases, investment spending will decrease. This is false. An increase in government spending increased demand for goods. This you know from learning unit two already. Um, this is true. An increase in the level of output and income decrease net exports. So this is your net exports um, relationship. And it says an increase in the level of output and income, it will in decreases your net exports. It's a negative relationship. 
a decrease in your exchange rate cause an increase in exports and net exports increase. So let's think about this again. It's your exchange rate that um, decreases. So therefore your exports increase and your imports decrease and net exports increase. This is true. An increase in the foreign level of output. So it's the foreign level of output increases. It's this relationship again increases the level of net exports and improves trade balance. This is true from this relationship. And then on in your study guide on page, we can't remember, but it's also a summary that summarizes all these relationships that we've just been talking about. So let's um, take a look back at learning unit four and the IS under model that you've covered there. So just a quick recap. So remember, your is Allen model is derived from the equilibrium level in the goods market. So the IS um, curve is a combination of all the equilibrium levels in the goods market um, for, for all the different levels of interest rates. In the financial market, your equilibrium level is a flat line because the interest rate is set by the Reserve Bank. You form your ISLM model, the curve thereof, by combining the equilibrium in the goods market, the IS curve, with the LM curve. And this is just an, um, it's enhanced. And then point A on this curve is the point where both your goods and financial markets are in equilibrium. And remembering that your LM relationship is the flat line because the um, Reserve Bank sets the interest rate. The difference for from learning unit four to learning unit seven comes with the IS relationship because remember now we are including the foreign sector. So similarly to the um, closed economy of learning unit four in the um, the IS curve is always also downward slope, sloping in an open economy. And just to say that if, well, we've said this in the, before, that um, in an open economy, the IS Allen model takes into account the exchange rate because the foreign sector is also considered. So the first reason why the IS curve is downward sloping is as you've learned in learning unit four is because of the negative relationship between the interest rate and the level of output and income. And this is through the investment spending that we've covered in the previous slides as well. But then in an open economy, there's an additional um, reason for or an additional support for this downward slope. And that is the interest rate impacting on the level of output and income through the exchange rate. So what happens is if you're, you've got a decline in your interest rate, then your dom domestic bonds are less attractive because um, investors can maybe get a better return in other countries. So you get a capital outflow and the capital outflow, what that means is there's less demand for your currency. So it reduces the demand for your local currency and a depreciation occurs. A depreciation makes the price of your exports cheaper, the price of exports decline, so exports increase. Sorry. Get my exports increase and um, the dem demand for domestic goods increase and the level of output and income increases. Um, so therefore you can see an, the negative relationship and decrease in your interest rate resulting in an increase in the level of output and income. Um, this effect is enhanced if there's also expanded to switch, switching due to the increase in the relative price of imports. Okay, so this is just um, the downward sloping IS curve in an open economy, and this is the two, um, the two relationships underlying that negative relationship. Okay, now let's do a question to get a good understanding of this negative slope. So remember the IS curve has got a negative slope. In the previous curve, it was just um, more curvy as a straight line, but it's still the IS curve. 
So the question is study the figure of an IS curve for an open economy and indicate whether government spending, taxes, consumption, investment, the exchange rate and exports are higher or the same for at point two compared to point one. So let's consider each of these um, variables. Government spending and taxes, both of them are the same at these two points because they are exogenous variables. So if the IS curve were to be on a different level, then the two points, um, if you compared them, then you would have been able to um, say that this, the government spending and taxes are different. The consumption spending between point two and point one, so the consumption spending is higher at point two since the level of outcome and income is higher. You see, if you read the two points from this graph at point two, your level of output and income is at Y2. At point one, level of output and income is at Y1. Investment spending, let's consider this before I bring up the answer. So let's see at um, point two, interest rate is I1. And at point one, the interest rate is higher, I2. We said there's a negative relationship between investment and um, interest rates. So at a higher interest rate, your investment will be lower. So at point two, investment spending is higher since the interest rate is lower. The exchange rate, the nominal exchange rate is lower at point two since the interest rate is lower. And the reason is again, the negative relationship that we've explained at the previous um, slide. And that is because your um, investors can get a higher return somewhere else. So you will have a capital um, outflow and your demand for the local currency will decline and there will be um, a lower exchange rate. And then export is higher based on this point because the exchange rate is lower. So then consider the equilibrium in an open economy and then what that means for the domestic interest rate and the exchange rate. So again, um, like in learning unit four, you've got your ISLA model. Um, the point A will be the equilibrium the point where both your financial and goods markets are in equilibrium. And at that point, your equilibrium um, interest rate and the equilibrium level of output and income can be um, determined from this diagram. However, your exchange rate is not determined by the IS Allen model. So figure B um, provides us with the information to give us the equilibrium level of the exchange rate associated with this interest rate. And you must just bear in mind that's for a, for, for a given foreign interest rate and the expected foreign exchange rate from an interest parity relationship. So let's see, look at the effects of fiscal policy in an open economy. What is fiscal policy? That is the actions by the government that impacts the level of outcome and income via the goods market and the main policy instruments of government spending and taxes. You get two types of fiscal policy, expansionary fiscal policy and contractionary fiscal policy. For expansionary fiscal policy, you want to stimulate economic activity. So you want to increase the demand for goods in the economy by increasing government spending or decreasing taxes. If your taxes goes down, it means your disposable income increases and you can um, increase your demand for goods. Then contractionary fiscal policy is to cool down economic activity and that's um, to decrease the demand for goods in the economy by decreasing government spending or and increasing taxes. Then there's a difference between a shift of the IS curve and a movement along the IS curve. So there's a movement along the IS curve if the interest rate changes 
And any change in the autonomous factors that change the demand for goods in the equilibrium level of output and income will cause the IS curve to shift. And those autonomous factors will include government spending, taxation, consumer and investor confidence and so forth. So let's look at expansionary fiscal policy. Um, this is covered on study guide page 227. And this will be a typical question that you might get. So it's assume that the economy is in a recession and the government decides to increase government spending given the level of taxes in order to stimulate the economy. So this is now from that, you know, it's expansionary fiscal policy. If we assume that we start from a balanced budget position, the increase in government spending will lead to a budget deficit. In an open economy, what will the impact on the exchange rate, the level of output and income, and the trade balance be? So while reading this, you should have picked up that you're increasing government spending and you want to stimulate the economy, so it's expansionary fiscal policy. You should also pick up it's an open economy and you want to know the level of output and income and the exchange rate. So you are looking at your ISLA model and your, um, your exchange rate to be determined. So let's see how we're going to answer this. What will happen? OK, the first thing that you have to consider is that because it's the question tells you government spending increase, the impact is on the goods market. So the first impacts on the goods market, government spending is autonomous consumption item. What did we say in the previous slide? If this um, changes, then your IS curve will shift. So your IS curve shifts to the right. And you can see from your, if you read from your diagram, the first thing that you can, will notice is that your, the increase in your level of output and income your interest rate does not change and your exchange rate therefore does not change. But let's go through it systematically. So we said the first impact is on the goods market. Your government spending increase, so your demand for goods and your level of output and income increases. Through the multiplier effect, your disposable income increases, so your consumption increases. And then there's also a positive relationship between the level of output and investment, so your investment spending increases. The next component that you consider, you move to the financial market. What happens in the financial market? Since the interest rate is set by the central bank, it's unchanged, and therefore the exchange rate is also unchanged. But the increase in the um, level of output will increase the demand for money and the quantity of money. Now let's move to the trade balance. The increase in the level of output and income results in an increase in imports and a deterioration of the trade balance. And this is your, um, this is what happens. Let's consider the other part, the contractionary fiscal policy. Um, this information is given to you by Tutor Activity 21. So I'm just going to, um, on to activity 21 in two sections. So first, um, it, it gives you the information that government spending decreases. So it's contractionary fiscal policy. First impact will be in the goods market. Let's see what happens. Since the autonomous consumption component decreases, the IS curve will shift to the left. Again, let's if we read from our diagram firstly, let's see what happens. So your IS curve moved from that point to this point. You've got a new equilibrium level at A1. Your previous equilibrium level gave you a level of output and income of Y, but now your new equilibrium point gives you a level of output and income of Y1, which is lower than Y. So again, your interest rate is unchanged um, and your exchange rate, if you read it off, um, will also be unchanged. Let's go through it systematically again. Because your government spending decreases, the demand for goods and the level of output and income also decreases. And through the multiplier effect, the level of consumption 
decreases and your investment um, spending also declines. In the financial market, we said that the, uh, the interest rate is set by the central bank so it's unchanged and therefore the exchange rate is also unchanged. A decrease, sorry for the spelling mistake, um, in the level of output and income will decrease the demand for money and the quantity of money. And then in terms of the trade balance, the decrease in the level of output and income results in a decrease in imports due to the decline in government spending and consumption, and the exchange rate is unchanged. But since exports are unchanged and imports decrease, your net in exports increase, and the trade balance improves. So Tutor Activity 21 also gives you this table, and then it asks you to explain the change in each of these variables. So I'm going to go through all of them. So in terms of output and income and consumption, you try to, to keep the, the diagram um, in your mind while we are answering this with help. So the level of output is determined by the demand for goods in the economy and it's given by the equilibrium equation that we've had before. So if there's a decrease in government spending, then the demand for goods decreases and the level of output and income decreases. The decrease in the level of output and income through this relationship decreases consumption spending and it's also, um, oh yeah, that's consumption spending. The interest rate, like we've seen before, is set by the central bank, so it's unchanged. Investment spending, we've done a few times now already, but it's again through this um, relationship. You keep this in mind as well. Um, we know that investment spending depends on the interest rate and the level of output and income. And um, since it's positive related to the level of output and income, a decrease in the level of output and income decreases investment spending. The exchange rate is unchanged because the interest rate does not change. Exports and imports. So exports is unchanged. The, the function for exports is that exports is a positive function of the foreign output levels and a negative function of the exchange rate. But foreign output is unchanged and therefore we are assuming that the rest of the world um, is not um, impacted by our government spending. So the exchange rate is also unchanged because the interest rate is unchanged and therefore exports are unchanged. Um, a decrease in imports. Imports is a positive function of the level of output and income and a positive function of the exchange rate. So the ex exchange rate does not change, we know that, but the level of output and income decreases and therefore um, imports decline. The impact on the trade balance, remember next exports are the difference between exports and imports. Exports are unchanged, imports decline. So your net export, um, increases and the trade balance improves. Okay, so now we've covered everything in the, in the study guide. Let's move on to revision assignments. Okay, let's consider this one. Which one of the following chains of events indicates the impact of a depreciation of the nominal exchange rate on the demand for goods and the level of output and income in the goods market for an open economy? So, the chain of events indicates the impact of a depreciation. A depreciation has to do with your exchange rate. So your chain of events will start with the exchange rate. Therefore, statements or chains of events numbers one, two, and three are immediately disqualified. They are not correct because they do not start with a depreciation of the exchange rate. If we consider um, numbers four and five, number five is not correct because this is an increase in the exchange rate. It's not a depreciation, it's an appreciation. And let's consider then statement number four. 
So it says that your um, depreciation of the nominal exchange rate leads to an increase in exports, trade back, your net exports increases, demand and the level of output and income increases. So that is the correct chain of events. Okay, in the ISL model for an open economy, these four statements are given and they are asking us whether they are correct or not. A downward movement along the IS curve, is the downward movement along the IS curve, implies that an increase in the interest rate. If I move down on the IS curve, the interest rate does not move up. It also moves down. It goes lower. So statement A, I don't have to read any further. It's already incorrect. Statement B, a downward movement along the IS curve implies that a decrease in the interest rate leads directly through investment and indirectly through the exchange rate to an increase in the demand for goods and an increase in the level of output and income. That is correct. The Allen curve is a horizontal at the interest rate set by the central bank. That is correct. Equilibrium output and the equilibrium interest rate are given by the IS and Allen curves intersection. And that we've seen before is also correct. That there where they um, intersect will be the equilibrium interest rate and level of output and income. And so statements B, C and D are correct. Statement A, incorrect. So we want to the next one. The following chain of events can represent the impact of an expansionary fiscal policy on the goods and financial market and exchange rate in an open economy. The following chain of events can represent the impact of an expansionary fiscal policy. So let's consider the first information that's given, expansionary fiscal policy. That means government spending increases and tax decreases. So immediately, statement C will be um, disqualified because an increase in tax is not an expansionary fiscal policy, it's a contractionary fiscal policy. Then, if you consider expansionary fiscal policy, if you look at the diagram, remember your IS curve moved to the right because government spending increases. Your interest rate is unchanged and your exchange rate is unchanged. So in that regard, statement B is disqualified because it ends with an increase in the exchange rate. So we've got three statements to consider. So let's look at them. Statement A, an increase in government spending. Yes, that is expansionary fiscal policy. It will lead to an increase in um, demand and the level of output and income. Your demand for money will increase and the in exchange rate is unchanged because the interest rate is unchanged. That's correct. And statement number D, if tax is declined, um, it means your disposable income increases, so demand, the um, disposable income and consumption increases, demand for money increases, um, interest rate is unchanged, and your exchange rate is unchanged. That's also correct. So the correct answer will be statements A and D, which is number three. And let's look at another one. Which of the following statements are correct? Assume that the shift of the IS curve to the left is because of a decrease in government spending since the budget deficit is too high. If government spending decreases without a decrease in the interest rate. So let's just think about this. Your IS curve moved, but there was no change in the interest rate. So you used to be at the equilibrium level A, and this level, and it moved to the new equilibrium level of A1. But you remained at this interest rate, so your exchange rate remained the same. Let's see. Which of the following statements are correct? The statement A. The new equilibrium level of output and income is now A1. Yes, that's correct. 
Consumption spending and investment standing, spending have decreased and the exchange rate is unchanged. Yes, that's correct. Statement B. Consumption spending is lower since the level of output and income is lower and disposable income is lower. That's correct. Okay, sorry, my arrows came up in the wrong order, but anyway, let's still go through them. Investment spending has decreased because the level of output and income has decreased. Yes, government spending has decreased since a positive relationship exists between level of output and investment spending. Yes, and the exchange rate will be unchanged since the interest rate is unchanged. Yes, so all four of the statements are correct. Okay, any questions? This is my story for tonight. Okay, then I'm going to thank you very much for, um, for giving me the thumbs up and acknowledging that you are fine. Okay, then good luck with your exam preparations.